Uh, hello, everyone, and thank you very much for coming today. And uh, first of all, I would like to thank the organizers, the organizers of our Basel, uh, particularly to Jessica Burgo. I'm sorry if I mispronounce it, uh, for inviting me today to moderate this panel. And also, it's a great pleasure for me to uh, meet all friends, Glenda, uh, Carlos, uh, my dear colleague, Estefan, from our time in Montreal, my time in Montreal. Okay, so I would like to open the discussion today with a phrase by the British curator and art critic Julian Stella Brass. In his book, Art Incorporated, the Story of Contemporary Art, he said, and I quote, the art world is bound to the economy, end of quote. This is a very provocative statement, and I would like to know if we could apply it to the Cuban art world of today. And let me just comment on something that uh, recently happened in Cuba. Um, Galleria Continua, the famous gallery from Italy, is one of the most prestigious commercial galleries in Europe, just opened a branch in Havana. So, Carlos, you have been part of that gallery for quite a while, and three more young Cuban artists just joined the roster. On the other hand, Galleria Continua recently organized a show that was held at the Wilfredo Lam Center, and as you may know, the Wilfredo Lam Center is the responsible for organizing Havana Biennial. So I would like to pose the question, what are the implications of inviting a foreign commercial gallery into a public cultural space that was born on the premises of gathering and promoting art of developing countries in Latin America and the Caribbean, Asia and Africa? And this was an art that was somehow excluded from Western platforms of artistic promotion. In other words, does this move create a conflict of interest between cultural governmental institution with a regional reach and a European private and commercial one? How to start with that? Uh, first of all, I think the question has a, a problem and it's uh, like uh, everything in Cuba is uh, public, it belongs to the government. And then there's no way to open any gallery in Cuba for now if you don't start to dealing with the government. And uh, that's a long discussion that we can have here about this uh, situation. In the other hand, the other thing I wanted to say is the things that was a gallery, as Galleria Continua, opening Havana. Not because it's been my gallery for 15 years, it's because it's really a gallery that uh, been acting in many ways, and one of the most beautiful ways being acting in Europe being a kind of cultural center as well. You know, I don't know if you are familiar that Galleria Continua for many years have a, a project that been copied, we can say that in Europe and in, in Italy and in many other places that called Arte all'arte, that being a very strong force to bring artists in the public space uh, together with curators, etc. And uh, that brings us to this uh, uh, question, no? the, the, to this position of Galleria Continua there. I say, thanks God, that is a, a gallery like that, and it's not a really uh, awful commercial space that opened in Havana, that really mm, don't take care of really how art is really presented, presented and projected to the public space. And uh, we, are, as well, I have a little problem with this question because I think recently, during the opening of the gallery, there was a, an article around that I, I saw was terrible. It was really a bad article that being issued on this idea of a public and private, etc. And uh, as many concerns is in, in America, in the States, and in Europe about this contradiction. I do believe that Cuba right now have to, to construct or reconstruct uh, every, every part of the civil society. If this question of this moment of uh, uh, American Cuba open relations is uh, good for something, will be to really give the opportunity to, to people like we say continue, but as well to some institutions if they wanted to, to arrive there and probably try to, to build something that is very important right now. How, um, how art can live or can be uh, developed 
in the situation that is not anymore the, 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 the traditional tension that we always have belong to a certain institution, very politicized, with a very specific agendas. And uh, w what will happen with that? No? And then I'm very curious, not only about the uh, one gallery open, I really would love that many people get the opportunity to arrive there and mm, make a point of view, because it's what we are missing. We've been missing that for years, and the artists in many ways being a kind of uh, isolated with one biennial, but really facing institution that we can say that they are not very helpful many times, we know that, and then in the way we are alone in this uh, circumstance. And then after 15 years working with a private gallery like Continua, I'm really happy that uh, what they've been doing, and what they've been developed. Uh, for my career in terms of, uh, in, you know, really develop my, my work, help me to do that. And that's what you're expecting from a gallery. Uh, it's probably in, the, in this case we can, you know, be against a little bit this idea of the artist just born to market only, you know. It can be born to, for ideas as well. So you think that, so what would be the main purpose of Galeria Continua in Havana? It's just to have an international roster so Cuban, the Cuban public can see the work of, of, of these artists, or to join, to, I mean, to invite more Cuban artists to join the gallery and to have an exhibition space near the Americas in a way. So how do you think the, the function of the gallery would be? Galeria Continua is working for me. I don't work for Galeria Continua. It's important so. that, eh? but I will answer that. Uh, I think their, their plan is to to bring uh, projects like they've been doing in China, like they've been doing in Paris. If you, if you saw the methodologies they've been using before, it's really a very, very challenged uh, program and project. Uh, I hope that will be a, a mix. They are starting the new space with Cuban art. But I have to say that probably that was very polemic because uh, we know that Cuban institution and Mm, they are expecting that the international artists arrive. And uh, as well, they do this uh, exhibition at the Wilfredo Land that I have to say is one of the most beautiful exhibition happened there for many years. It's an exhibition based on installation work from artists, a really size specific art. They was the biggest force to do that from many people. And many of the artists there are artists that already been at the Biennale. Uh, Galeria Continua have this group of artists, you know, from Nari Ward that is right now at the, at the Paris Museum, or Anish Kapoor, or Mona Hatun, or Pascal Martin Tayou. Many of these artists being in the Havana Biennial. And then I think it was familiar already with the space. Uh, I have the opportunity to stay, to be with Pascal, that I is an old friend, and he been several times to Cuba, two times at the Havana Biennale, and we have a very great talk and discussions about his position related to Cuba, the, to Cuba politics, and how he feel inside the, in the, the context of Cuba, that this is more important. I think it's a, we are talking about a context that is always people arrive there as a tourist. It's a passage all the time, no? And then it's nothing substantial that stay there. And then I hope this, uh, uh, the, the gallery or this gallery or the other galleries or the other institution arrive is really uh, <coughs> create the, the ground to something that will be very important in the near future, no? in the next two or three years. Uh, so that ground that you think is going to create, would you be more specific when you say, well, it would create a very I important think, I, ground? I think it's a, the people who are familiar with Cuba, they know that it's a... It's an extremely sophisticated uh, develop of the art, uh, very cult, cult, cult and culture, very uh, well uh, sedimented. We can, I don't know if this is a word, but it's a sediment of that there. And, uh, but we really, we are lack of uh, institution, spaces that really can give us time. I think art is something, and artists, we need time. We need to don't do nothing. We really need that. We need a, a free time, and we need people who pay for that. And then uh, this is very difficult, because uh, here people pay to get something. They don't pay to give you something. 
and that's a very problematic. And then, but I think it's very important to develop this uh, ground as a keep going in the cultural level with the many uh, streets. We can say institutions or private, but at the same time we need, uh, you know, we need to to have the feeling that the Cuban uh, the system of Cuba is really open to another. Uh, levels and possibilities. We only been, you know, as an artist, you know, you, your your future or your big dream is being in the Bahia of Havana, in the Wilfredo Land. But it's a Bahia that you have to do everything to be there. You have to pay for every piece of uh, nail you put on the on the place. And then, I think that's very important how to make conscience to to this uh, Minister of Culture or the new institution that will be arrive that uh, we need to be really support. Support in the very free and open way, no, no, no restriction, uh, political, any kind of freedom, and it's very important. Okay, so I will go back to the question of the market a little bit later, which is, I think is a very interesting topic, mm -hmm. and it's something that many Cubans are discussing these days, many Cuban artists. So my next question is for Glenda. And um, Glenda, you studied art history in Cuba. That was your first uh, training and decided to become a visual artist. So the question would be, did the academic training in any way prepare you to follow this route? Well, first, uh, I have to uh, tell that um, my first real training was dance, <laughs> okay. classical dance. And also, also, I also studied visual art. You remember? Um, in, in Havana, well, in Cuba, we, this, the artists study uh, art since 12 years old, the visual art. So I, start, I started in this uh, school when I was 12 years old, but I hated drawing so much <laughs> with all my, 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 my soul. So I, I prefer to dance, so that's why I changed dancing. And, well, to make the story short, yes, afterwards I did the, um, after that I did the art history career and of course it helped me a lot because the most important thing I, I think I gained is to not repeat the work because I think uh, many uh, visual artists now from all over the world, not just Cubans, they keep repeating works that we have seen that have done in the 60s and I, I just cannot understand how curators don't see that you know and don't like try to see new work of young artists who are making new works and not repeating the whole thing. So I think that art history is crucial for artists as well because you know you have compromise to 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 give something new to the art history to the art. Okay, so you also do a, a sort of interdisciplinary work um, like performance, video art, photography, sound installation. Uh, do you think this is a path that many Q uh, young Cuban artists are following these days? And the other question would be, do you feel that working on different media open more doors for an artist in terms of a career opportunities? I will say something. <laughs> now, um, what I've seen in the scene in Cuba is that there are a lot of, there is, and it's related with economy, as you said before, as you started, uh, there is a tendency, a vogue to paint because it sells. So you see, of course, like two meters or three meters paintings, and it's a vogue. And I, I, don't, I, I don't think that's related with my work, because not just because I don't paint, but because they just paint mainly. And even you see young people who before did the installations and videos or you know, other kind of work, and not, now they just paint because they know that a lot of you know, collectors coming and it's ready with the crisis as well, I think, that when you want to invest, you invest in painting better than, or the sculpture of marble, instead of like, you know, something that who knows how we will end up in 10 years. So you think that the, that the market has, in a way, um, uh, not forced, but have redirected Cuban artists to certain medium, like painting. Completely, and that I it took it it takes me to my generation. That um, of course it's different than Carlos, <laughs> a bit younger. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, so when I started in, in this group uh, that you know, group of Dup with related with uh, Rene Francisco. At that time, uh, the feeling that we had, and it was like, okay, it's enough with political art. 
So we want to do something else. Why? Because political art, it was, you know, so easy to sell somehow, you know, because when you, you see the collectors, they want to, to see art in Cuba that criticize the system, of course. I understand them. Uh, but we had this need, you know, let's do something universally understood. And I think the market, in a way, changed us as well, because in a way, we wanted to differentiate what was, you know, for that. So I think, again, it's happening something different, but with painting. I don't know if I answered the question. I think so. Okay. <laughs> uh, so, Estefan, my next question is for you. So you were fundamental in choosing and organizing the uh, Cuban art show in Montreal that um, opened in 2008. And uh, you, you were responsible for a lot of uh, um, selection of the works in that show, especially the contemporary uh, section. So were there any particularities that you perceive in Cuban art that struck you as unique in comparison to North American or European art that you have been dealing with many years as curator? So there was something that struck you as, some, as particular, singular, unique? Um, <clears throat> yes, many things. But actually, before we, we get to that, I just want to bounce back also on what Carlos said. Um, Indeed, I mean, there's an, an, an amazing, you know, uh, artistic scene in Havana, but there's a, a critical lack of civic institutions. And um, what I see now, I, I did organize that show with you in, in Montreal years ago, and we were going back and forth to, to Havana. You were from Havana. Um, and I hadn't been in six years, and what struck me this year is how um, the interest from the North American market. Until then, it was mostly, aside from a few private collectors, one is in this room, very courageous man, and a few university institutions, mostly Canadians were acquiring uh, Cuban art and uh, maybe foreign private collectors. But now s this interest is putting such a pressure, uh, the interest of the market is putting such a pressure um, that you would want um, civic institutions to be able to counterbalance and absorb uh, the artistic life and the meaning within the Cuban society itself uh, before it just, you know, all goes um, uh, to, uh, to the economy. <clears throat> what struck me, I think, in um, while looking at Cuban art in the uh, early 2000s was uh, Let's not forget, this was hardly 10 or 12 years after the Periodo Special when the Soviet, you know, retrieved their, their aid and the Cuban economy uh, went through a collapse and, and a state of, uh, of uh, indigence quite, quite acute. Um, what struck me was the, the very acute sense of history and of the uniqueness of their condition in history that the artists and the Cuban artists had. Not to mention their immense, um, um, how, how well cultured and literate they were, how professionally they were trained, uh, but also how, there's a word in French, débrouillard, how, uh, uh, how inventive they were with a, a critical lack of means. Uh, in the 90s in Cuba, you could not find, you know, HD projectors and linen canvases and et cetera, et cetera. So, um, you know, if we say that necessity is the mother of invention, uh, the, this very, very uh, not unsolicited, uh, but very hard necessity that, that, uh, that fell upon the Cuban society in the 90s uh, created an immense uh, inventivity. Uh, but I guess what is defining, and, and we had discussions with this, uh, about this, previously with Glenda, is um, how artists reacted to their condition with very, very in great, great intelligence uh, at, at counteracting, uh, you know, the effects of the regime and the condition. Carlos is, is one of the most brilliant uh, artists of his generation, as we all know. But we had this discussion with Glenda, who uh, felt trapped in the dialectic of having to respond to history, where she 
you know, as a younger artist, said, well, can I do something else than having to cope with this F situation, you know, in which I am? And, and I think it's this very fine balance uh, or this, that, that artists have to navigate within Cuba. And it's, I, I foresee that it will be even more acute as the regime seems to change and the pressure of the art market uh, makes its way onto the scene. Which leads me, leads me to the next question that is very much in tune with what you said. Um, so for many years, many Cuban artists, as you said, have targeted certain buyers. So mostly American, either curators or collectors, who were going to Cuba to select or to buy or to collect certain type of art that were rather affordable and with certain aesthetic and content. And we're talking about this political content, this, this kind of re uh, resistant, political resistance against the regime, etc. So what do you think, you and Carlos, will happen when Cubans, I mean locals, get more money and be able to buy and collect Cuban art? Because, you know, as we are witnessing, there is a, a whole new class emerging in Cuba that have money and they are entrepreneurs, and they might start buying and collecting Cuban art. So the question will be, will that impact how Cuban artists will create their work? Will they start working? I mean, artists will start working to satisfy that particular taste? We'll see. But I am very curious to see, uh, for example, right now, is a, of course, there's a lot of people making money even from business that we saw, uh, even friends. Um, I'm more concerned to see how this money, or if, how, if we can say I live in Europe, I live in Spain, and I pay a lot of taxes. That I, from these taxes, I, I, I get even my kids to school for free in Europe. You know? And then I'm very curious to see what will happen with this money, more than the the collecting thing, because the collecting thing is, we know is a long education road, and um, it's always based on, on the test, on the very specific, very sp private thing, and then it's so uh, democratic, you know? The, our world is not a democracy at all, we know that. This is very clear here. And then I do believe more in how the people who will make money will what kind of rules or way we will get to make this money circulate? You know, now I see like a fantastic restaurants, like friends of mine making a lot of money, traveling the world. And probably in the corner is a school that have nothing. You know, it is very, very really suffering. And then I'm very, for me, is a, that's a very important issue. You know, to see how we can really create the more democratic formulas to make this money arrive to people, to culture and to education. And I do believe uh, that what Cuba have today as art is uh, really because we have a wonderful education in many years, whatever, you know, the political issue, we don't bring it here because it's bigger than this. But it was really important that we really get free school, free universities, good teachers, and here we are talking about this. No? And then how to really turn that in the, in the new society, a new society who really will need uh, public institutions, public institutions to belong to public money. And uh, the ways that, uh, that we never made this question before, but the ways that this money arrived to us in the schools, etc., before probably was with the support of the Soviet Union or whatever, was a rich money arriving, whatever happened. But we are facing something new. We are facing people making money and people don't making money at all. And we are facing a socialist institution with a very uh, specific uh, political agendas and strategies. And we are facing, uh, you know, ways to don't get anything from from what has happened, you know, and then I think from there it will be more important to to get money to support not only the public institution as well a small private institution. I do believe a lot that the the art himself, the system himself, need to have another typologies 
of uh, uh, you know agents, you know, people who really can dynamize, the, make it more dynamic the situation. That they're more independent, more outsiders. If we can, we can say today that we can have any outside thing in the art system that is a very solid uh, block of money. But uh, there is a, it's really something that is necessary to happen. And in the collectors, we, as an artist, uh, we love our great collectors. I have great collectors that are great friends, great supporters. And I really admire their constant um, support, etc. But we as well, we know that it's many collectors that don't do that. It's, it's just to, they're looking for something in Havana that is like a, como dice, El Dorado. They are looking for a new El Dorado. And this new El Dorado, we know, we already saw things that happened before. We saw China, we saw India, we saw even Brazil is in the strong, problems there, and then I really don't want it to see that to happen in Cuba. And uh, as well, I believe that the, what, uh, what we are facing now is a kind of new change of the geopolitical and uh, political economy. You know, it's, it's a, a change of a map, and it looks like it will change the whole equation. And I'm very surprised that people expecting that in one year, Cuban art and uh, will be the most beautiful thing that people can acquire. I think it's necessary to, to slow down a little bit and create a, a structure, civil societies. It's very important, more than get collectors. Collectors are a circumstance from a mm, democracy and civil society with money. Yeah, but I think we are talking about the, the name of the, the panel is The Future of Cuban Art, so uh, I was a little bit forced to narrow my questions to that particular theme, although I see the importance of creating this civil society in Cuba. It's fundamental for the advance of the country. But um, we can't ignore what is going on in Cuba, that this socialist country that we were born in and we grew up in is, is changing. It's changing into different forms that detached very much from socialist structures and routes. And, well, I would like to uh, uh, ask you the same question. Do you, do you see Cuban collectors now emerging in Cuba or the people who are buying uh, works of Cuban artists who live in Cuba are mostly foreigners who live in Cuba or are temporarily working in Cuba and they are buying? Because I know I have seen houses. There is a friend of mine, um, Hermes Maya, he, he made a book about Cuban houses. And some of the houses, one of the projects is Cuban houses today. And he's going to these mansions in El Laguito and Miramar, and there is a lot of artwork uh, of, 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 of people living in Cuba who are buying this, this, this work. So, I think my work is not that kind. <laughs> I, I have to say I, my work is not in these houses. <laughs> But, um, and... It's true that it's mostly painting, as you say. Yeah, you yeah. see. <laughs> so, um, yes, of course, I've seen. I definitely have seen, uh, especially because it, 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 had the, it happened the biennial last uh, May. So I have seen definitely more uh, collectors coming. And actually, you walk in the street in Cuba and you hear more, more English speaking, more Americans. You see more tourism, you know, definitely. And, but, but for the local collection, um, I can tell you I'm not lucky. <laughs> it's not, and I, I think it's also the taste, you know, as Carlos said, there is a lot of education still to, that we miss, you know, that still for, for happening. Um, they, it's not the kind of work they buy, you know, the local, the local collectors. I don't think it's a kind of uh, Carlos Garaycoa's work or my work, you know, it's like more work commercial. I have many places. Huh? I have many work in many houses. In Cuba? In, in Cuban houses? I'm very proud of that. Okay. Yeah, so, so here you go. Them. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, I don't know these people, actually. <laughs> Maybe because I'm younger. <laughs> oh, yeah, you need, you need certain connections I, I, to I get into to these say, houses. I, let me say something, because I, I think uh, the market, or what we call collecting art, is not, doesn't belong only to... to uh, how do we say to the gen gender? Or to how do you say to the, no, the 
technique, technique or whatever. I think, you know, in the recent years as well, appeared wonderful painters in Cuba. And then we have to say that because uh, it's important. You know, when I found a great painter, I really admire a lot, no? And then uh, it's not only about, about that, about painting or not painting. It's really about how people get the position to the market, what they expecting. I think uh, because we really don't have a market, a local market, we really don't know what is the market, how the market function in a way. And I think it's very important that the, as well that many of the galleries and curators and collectors been in Havana recently, or not recently, because this, as well we have to say that this is the second time I, I, be, I live this, eh? I live this in the 90s already. This explosion of Q&R, we have a pack of books of Q&R from the 90s. I have a lot, and then now will appear a lot of new books. We'll see if this changed, you know? But this is the second time I live this in my life, no? We'll see if it's serious. But is it very important, and happened already in the 90s, that a lot of collectors and galleries and museums arrive and give opportunity to, to some artists that to get abroad, to get international, and to understand a little bit how it work. Uh, and I hope this happen again now. This, this visibility that Cuban art is having is not only to make easy money in the hands, it's really to this, uh, facing these new possibilities that artists can have, you know, to try to understand and don't be in the studio making something that they believe will satisfy a market. Because uh, we know that the market is never satisfied. We only can satisfy ourselves doing art, and then we'll see the rest, no? I, I forgot the, yes, my house is one in one mansion. <laughs> it's Ella Cisneros, I forgot that which is, uh, you know, one of the biggest collectors now for Q1 art. And I forgot that. And also, it's true, I didn't just refer to the painting. I refer that it's a phenomenon of just like one kind of work that can be also installation, but it's so commercial. And this is, for me, the, what the local collectors, future collectors, will start buying because, I don't know, it's, it's easier. I don't know, it's like more... Uh, uh, it's less conceptual and it's less, it's more visually, uh, see, exactly. Stefan, you want to say something? Well, yes, because it just uh, strikes me that there's uh, some sort of chasm here in, in expectations in production. Maybe the foreign market has been indeed expecting from Cuban artists that they, uh, you know, take on uh, the, the, the challenges of, of the historical condition, and that's what we expect. Um, to the point that we're not looking or seeing the very good painting that may be done while the Cuban uh, public would, would be more sensitive or receptive to the painting. Uh, would it be that we are uh, now currently uh, uh, taking in, you know, in the foreign market bad political art and missing out on great uh, non-political painting uh, is something that that requires actually a very deep knowledge of the scene and uh, what I see as very problematic now is is how uh, little depth and commitment there is within that scene from most of the um, foreign uh, market uh, collectors and investors they just barge down you know during the biennial I'm very sorry apologize in buses and then, you know, come back maybe three years after. And so the knowledge of the scene is quite superficial and the expectations are there to, um, to, uh, to last in this, in this case, of course. Okay, so one, uh, one uh, question that I have, and maybe we can open the floor to the public if they, I, I'm sure they have many questions, but um, usually I tell my students the perks of being a Cuban artist living in Cuba and they can't believe it because, you know, artists uh, always struggle a lot around the world. So you could summarize the main challenges, challenges and benefits that artists face and receive while living in Cuba. And um, do you foresee if this situation, this, this benefits that artists have in Cuba once they have made it, it will continue or it might change in the near future? So the first question would be what is the what is entails to be what does it entail to be a Cuban artist living in Cuba entail means like the, like what are the benefits once you are well known a well known artist living in Cuba um, 
so because Cuban art is uh, form an, almost an elite in, the, in Cuban society. So benefits and challenges of that. First benefit is, of course, um, you don't have to think about uh, working for anything else but for your own work, which is, you know, I think is sacred. And that's for me number one benefit. And it's hard to explain now, so it's, but you know. And do you think if Cuba open up more and um, with, you know, this new rapprochement of diplomatic relations with the states, maybe they leave the embargo, so the society might change quite a lot. Do you think artists will be able to maintain this lifestyle in the future? That depends on the system and the economy and the politics. I have no idea. I always say that bad art is always bad art. It doesn't matter what is it, if it's in Cuba or abroad. And uh, I, 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 I divide my time in between Havana, very few, few months a year. Um, Europe. I decided to leave Cuba like in 2006. Uh, really, my experience is uh, uh, for many people probably I'm not a Cuban artist anymore, no, because uh, I cannot answer this question uh, exactly. But I do believe that to be an artist in every place you are is a difficult matter, and uh, to be an elite artist with success is always elite not only in Cuba, it's an elite here and it's an elite in Spain and it's an elite in Canada. And uh, there's probably what we have is this definition uh, still like a, the only people who can do certain things or can travel or can do that was a Cuban artist when they get certain success. But uh, you know, I do, I do believe that the, the, the most important is to as an artist, to, to feel very good and very well wherever you decide to be. And it's very important for an artist to have answer from the context that give you uh, the possibility to keep going because it's not an easy task. It's, uh, when I decided to, to, to leave Cuba was because my context was, didn't give me the answer in the social uh, answers or even the the economical answer to keep doing my art. And uh, right now I, ha I am in a, in a trip of going back in the way. I try to give more to, to my context. I, am, I believe a lot that artists have to, to create this context themselves because nobody will create for us. I live in Spain and you know, the news about Spain is very clear. It's a, it's a democracy with a big corruption. With a lot of things happen there with a lot of political uh, impact in, on people, and I still believe that this is the way to answer as well this context. As well, I have this position when I've been living in Cuba. And then I think it's important as an artist, uh, really try to answer the context you are. If you are in Cuba and then we are facing this, uh, how we can, in the way, how we can react to this situation, how artists and the artist community can do something that really uh, uh, do construct something for them, construct something for the art. And uh, not only in the commercial way, of course, and uh, what we are ha facing now is this commercial, we are talking here, this invasion of supposed to be collectors. No? And uh, I think it's, that's a, the, the only thing I can say. This, uh, the future of an artist in Cuba is the same past we have as an artist in Cuba. It's people who will be struggling with a new situation, with a new context, it's a very politicized contest. Is we cannot forget that. And the new opening of Cuba and America is even bring more f uh, wood to the fire of this political situation that we have for 50 years. And uh, art cannot deny that. Art cannot be given the back to that. I think it's important that the, the, the way we, we position there, or even outside there, talking about what is Q and R, if we can say that today, because I think I don't believe in that as well, no? I've been 20 years trying to erase my, my mark as a Cuban artist, but then here I am defending that. And I think it's a, it's a contradiction, but it's a very, you know, I, we don't want any artist wanted to be a Ghana artist or Cuban artist or 
Canadian artists. We want to, we are artists. We are people who are thinking, who are developing ideas. And probably this opening, I hope, that for the first time give us the opportunity of to have an international context. Because we always have to explain ourselves. I, I am living 20 years explaining myself as Cuban. How is to be a Cuban artist? It's, people are curious. It's possible to be Cuban artist in Cuba, of course. It's, it's no way. If you are an artist, you do art, whatever you are. And then that's very important that we realize that this new context will give us, I hope, new, new frontiers. We open more and we will get more from abroad. We will get more information and we will get more easy to, to live, to be here and to try to, to define ourselves as an artist, in, as an international artist. That is the only way to be an artist today. Um, on the other hand, when I listen to you, Carlos, I cannot help but think that the way you shaped your art um, owes a bit fundamentally to the condition in which you grew up as an artist. A very strong, uh, you know, Jean-Paul Sartre had a very famous formula in France. He said, in French, he said, on se pose en s'opposant. One defines oneself by opposing. And uh, you, your art is, uh, relies or rests on, on, a, on a critical foundation. I think that, in part, is due to the, the, the very peculiar conditions in which you grew. But I, I totally get you when you say, well, OK, then I develop something else. You know, It, it is what I'm doing. Um, uh, Every individual grew up in peculiar. Yeah. In this case, without being a Cuban artist, you're certainly an artist from Cuba. Uh, there is a condition uh, that one cannot escape and uh, that one grows on. Then I, on. I give up. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think it's a, you know, I think the context defines you a lot. And it's important to understand that. But your context, your social and political context and economical context, is not your art no, no. at can, all. Can and I then, ask a question? No. Um, so as far as like Stefan, for you when you're constructing an exhibition that's region specific or nation specific, but you, you want to support the artists that they're, they're artists, regardless of nation or, or region. How do, you how, do you do, how do you do that? It's, um, your question goes to the, 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 um, the trickiness of, of such a, a situation indeed. Because one is always of the place where, where he is, where he uh, you know, understands the world from. It's just a very fundamental fact of life. Uh, on the other hand, um, the quality of, and we can speak to the quality of art, is that it reaches beyond you know, the, the very strict parameters of, of one's condition. Um, whether we like it or not, there are national scenes. There are city scenes. There are national markets. Um, the Americans, for instance, being a foreigner, it's easier to, 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 to remark or to notice, um, have a national market. But the market is so big, they tend to forget that it's just a national market. Uh, there are superstars of American art who are totally unknown abroad, and, and we tend to forget that it's, this is a national scene. So uh, once you acknowledge that, I think, and you, you make the nuances necessary in your, in your selection, um, it's doable, but it's tricky. I, I totally agree because the, and we, we had actually 15 years ago, we had worked with uh, Guillermo Santa Marina in, in uh, Mexico on an exhibition of um, Mexican uh, art scene from Mexico City. And Guillermo was very reluctant um, to, um, uh, you know, to, to nationalize uh, the artists with which he worked. And he came up with the idea of the mobilidad in, in contemporary Mexican art, which was both the mobility as a theme, but also looking at the, you know, all these artists from the diaspora who were working in Mexico City. So Thomas Glassford, uh, Melanie Smith, uh, Francis Alice, that was in 99. And it was a way to sort of, uh, you know, assess the peculiarity of the Mexican scene while also taking in, in, into account its openness and its globality. Um, so uh, that was an example of how we got to it in that, in that case. Um, Cuba is, is an island. It has a very 
specific condition. Uh, I would never want to let it be understood that if we're looking at the, at the national scene that the artists that work within that scene are only of national scope or, or uh, uh, value or relevance, uh, which is not the case. Um, well, I'm leaving that open because it is it is it is an open-ended. Uh, uh, yes. Yeah, so I think there is situation. one question over here. Maybe we have uh, time for only one question. So yes. Only one question. I don't want to be. Go ahead, please. Glenda, this is for you. Uh, Carlos mentioned that um, there's a new wave of entrepreneurs, possibly artists, restaurant restaurateurs, in Cuba now, and obviously you're going to have a bigger economic divide. How do you cultivate, he mentioned the school that doesn't have you know, any money in the corner and then the entrepreneur is making a lot of money. How are, how are artists, maybe artists can be leaders in this in Cuba with more money that you're making, to have a philanthropic culture to, uh, how do you say philanthropico? Is that a word in Spanish? Yeah, philanthropico cultura to cultivate that as an artist, as a, you know, a new entrepreneur yourself with this coming barrage of collectors, <laughs> um, do you feel a responsibility to be philanthropic and to be a leader as a as group of artists in a philanthropic way in Cuba so that it's not just up to the government so that maybe you can have a little control and you can yeah, I think Carlos is doing a better job than me because he's... <laughs> well, um, since my modest, you know, from my, what I can do, I, I has, um, you know, I'm related with John Goratis. I don't know if I will answer the question with this, but um, I, I am very in, uh, in touch with very young artists and I, we share, you know, every time I travel, because I also spend some time of, my, of the year in Madrid, but it's now more, uh, you know, like eight months in Havana and the rest in Madrid. So every time I travel, uh, I bring catalogs, I, we, we share with uh, friends and they really appreciate because there is a, lot, a lack, an uh, enormous lack of information. Uh, well, not uh, like, I especially printed catalogs because it's also a very fluid uh, exchange of uh, digital information is really I've never seen that I, I, I update myself in Cuba with, with you know with all these <laughs> films and and you know because my friends just pass it to me and I cannot get these films in, in Madrid anyway um, what I can do I you know I support some artists I buy some works but it's, it's not comparable with what Carlos does also you know collecting Cuban art and artists and young artists and, and helping them, you know, in that way. Also, Los Carpinteros, you know, also by, especially Dagoberto. Uh, you know, it's, I don't know if I answer your question. Uh, you can, you know, ask me again <laughs> something in another way. Sorry. Yes. Yes. Uh, I, I think that the, the question coming from you it's also, it's not only en engaging the commitment that the artists in Cuba, they could have with the art, but it's also talking about the, um, the in a way, the compromise that the artists, they have with the country uh, in order to develop other things in society. For instance, I think that Carlo is doing already something about that when he's saying that the Cuba needs a, a, a more strong uh, social, uh, what was the, the... Don't remember. You don't remember? Uh, don't remember. The, the, well, what, I, what we're trying to say here is I am an artist myself, and I, I am Cuban, and I live outside Cuba. And in the experience living outside Cuba, I learned that, uh, a lot of things that are connected to the society in which, more close to the society in which we live here, that um, I believe that I have the duty to bring to Cuba and share with people around. And it's not only about art, but it's also about the society and the structure. For instance, the way how the, the society find ways to tax for the profits and you name it, you know? So in that sense, Cubans, Cuban artists that live outside, we have the benefit or let's say the opportunity to learn uh, 
uh, living in other, in other contexts, uh, knowledges and practices that can be useful for developing the future of the country from which we belong. And of course that I am committed to the culture in a way as well and to the art, but I think that there are many other la layers that are extremely necessary to bring to Cuba and to share with the Cubans that is not only to buy art uh, for the young artists uh, hanging around, you know? Okay, so I think we've run out of time. Thank you yeah, so yeah, much no, thank you. Uh, to our panelists and thank you very much for coming tonight.